facts all about muscles that you need to know in order to pass your level two exam first time. So here goes. First, first fact that you need to know to pass that level two AMP exam is that your muscle must cross a joint in order to make it move. Now, most people get a little bit confused in relation to muscle origins and insertions, and it gets them a little bit, a bit, a little bit confused by things. So, first thing you need to know is that every muscle that makes a movement must cross a joint. So this is a joint, two bones. Then this muscle attaches with a tendon, comes down through, and then that muscle is joining both together. So it might be a badly drawn muscle, but you can excuse that. There's one muscle, okay? Now you can imagine that if these fibres contracted and got shorter, that that would bring both bones together. So it brings the origin insertion closer together and it kind of concertinas it together. So that's what's happening when the muscle contracts and it has to cross this joint in order for that to happen. So you can imagine if it attached, if it started here and ended here, even if it contracted, it wouldn't have anywhere to go. So it must cross that joint in order to make that movement happen. So that's the first thing you need to know. Now the other side of that is that there is going to be another muscle on the other side. So this is now fact two. Muscles work in pairs around each joint, giving you an agonist and antagonist pair. So let's take this that we had a moment ago. Let's say this one is your bicep, for example. That's quite an easy one to suggest. This one's then your elbow as the joint. Then down here, this has got to be your tricep. So let's try and draw a tricep. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so what you'll notice is that they go either side of every single joint you have. So if you have a joint with a muscle on one side, I guarantee you'll have a joint with a muscle on the other side. So that's going to be our tricep. Now, all you need to know is that there is an agonist and antagonist. So they're classed as agonist antagonistic pairs that evolve around one joint. So in this case, the bicep and tricep are agonist antagonist pairs and they revolve around the elbow. So that's it written down on here. So agonist antagonist, they're the words you're looking out for. Now, it's important to know these pairs. So when you're working um, in the gym and you have to label different exercises, you have to know which muscles work opposite to other muscles, which exercises may be opposite to other exercises, they're important to know. So let's pick elbow as a joint. I've already said you've got bicep and you've got tricep that go either side of the elbow joint. In terms of shoulder, a lot of people get confused here. You've got your shoulder muscles here, so your deltoids, and they help lift the arm up. So your deltoids and your lats are agonist antagonistic pairs because the shoulders lift the arm up and the lats lift the arm, uh, pull the arm back down. So they are agonist antagonistic pairs, shoulder muscles, so deltoid and latissimus dorsi as well. So they're agonist antagonist pairs. Then you've got around the hips, you've got your glutes and your hip flexors. Now those are agonist antagonistic pairs. Then down here around your knee, you've obviously got your hamstring and your quad. They both run either side of the knee to cause you to flex and extend your knee. And then right down here on your ankle as well, you've obviously got your a lot of smaller muscles, which you actually don't need to know in detail for level two. But you've got your soleus and your gastrocnemius on one side and your tibialis anterior on the other side. And they help move your foot through plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So they're probably the main ones that you need to know. You could extend that further. Let's go one more, actually. You've got a rectus spinae on the back that runs either side of your spine and your rectus abdominis on the front. So they are antagonistic pairs. So when you have your joint, make sure you're aware of the muscles that work either side of it in as an agonist antagonistic pairs. Okay, so with those in mind and those sort of facts laid out, you need to know those as best as you can. The third part is that these work together. So now you know that you've got an agonist and an antagonist, you need to know that there is something called reciprocal inhibition. So inhibition means to, to calm something down or to stop it or to relax it. And then reciprocal means it's happening in relation to. 
So this is when, if we go back to our bicep tricep, if this agonist contracts, imagine this bicep, you're doing a bicep curl and the bicep contracts so it gets a little bit shorter. That brings this insertion closer to the origin. So you actually are, are closing this gap here. So your elbow moves, okay? Now, in order for that to happen, this tricep has to relax because it's joining at the same point. So if the bicep gets shorter, the tricep must get longer. And that's basically what's happening with any reciprocal inhibition. When one contracts, the other relaxes. Perfect. Next one is fact four. Fact four is the e you need to know about eccentric and concentric contractions. So for this, it's important to now consider what muscle is the prime mover of every exercise you do. So let's go back to this lovely little uh, drawing that we had. Let's stick with bicep to start off with. It's the easiest one to consider. Imagine you're doing a bicep curl. Now you know that the prime mover for that bicep curl is the bicep, not the tricep. How do you know it? Well, when you do it, that's where you feel it. When you do it, that's where you get the results. So you know that, that is the prime mover. Now the bicep is contracting concentrically, which means it's getting smaller. And it means that basically these muscle fibers are, are getting shorter and they're concertining, they're contracting, they're collapsing, they're getting closer together. Now that's how I like to remember it, is that concentric is basically getting smaller. So the C, it means that the muscle is collapsing. Now that's a really good way of remembering it, but also you'll also notice that if it's a concentric contraction, then the weight that you're holding when you do that bicep curl, that's a dumbbell in case you're wondering, the weight you're holding will actually be going up towards the clouds. So you know that the weight is going up to the clouds. Whereas conversely, when you've got eccentric contraction, this is now when we're going back down and we're lowering the dumbbell back down towards the floor, the eccentric contraction, this muscle elongates, so it extends right out. So we end up with an elongated muscle. And the weight itself goes down towards the earth. So that's how you can help remember those. But the only thing you need to then know alongside that is which muscle is the prime mover for the exercise you're choosing. So press up, know that it's the, the chest that's the prime mover because then you know that the chest is the agonist, like we were talking about. That's going to be concentric, it's concentrically contracting and the muscle will be shortening as you push your body up towards the clouds. Whereas when you do, uh, when you're lowering back down, that chest is eccentrically contracting, the pecs are eccentrically contracting, and that's very different to then saying that the back is then contracting, for example. So you want to make sure that you're aware of those four lovely facts in preparation for your level two anatomy and physiology exam. They're going to set you up massively, and they're also going to really help you with your practical side as well. So I hope you've found this useful. If you have, pop a little comment below and I look forward to hearing from you. Also make sure you hit like and share this with your buddies as well. If you need any more help with any of your revision, we do have our revision mastery series. So make sure that you follow the links in the description above and you can uh, take a little look through and have a look at some more videos. Have a great day ahead and good luck with the revision.